Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this presentation on building and debugging highly reliable FPGA-based designs. The title of this presentation, Helicopters to Venus, is intriguing. We currently have helicopters on Earth, and those are designed with stringent standards and often use FPGAs as part of their design. There have been helicopters flown on Mars, and those uh, have been designed with more stringent standards to, to handle the harsh environments of the Martian landscape. Now, helicopters to Venus, if it's ever done, will pose an even more difficult challenge to handle the harsh environment on the surface of the planet Venus with temperature and radiation effects that are far beyond most FPGA's design uh, requirements. The need for safety is everywhere. Every industry currently has safety standards and high reliability standards. For the industrial market, with heavy machinery, dangerous machinery, often, there are stringent standards specified in the IEC 61508. For automotive, especially self-driving cars, the ISO 26262 standard covers the safety and reliability of automotive applications. For medical, which often has dangerous x-rays or other dangerous particle uh, beams, the IEC 60601 standard covers those applications. And for aerospace, there isn't a standard, but there is a design process requirements, DO 254, which define, define the design and implementation of FPGA-based designs. System availability requirements often approach 99.99% uh, in, for these standards. So safety, addressing faults and failures. There are two types of safe, uh, faults and failure modes. One is systemic failures and faults. When the cause of a failure can be determined and eliminated by a modification of the design, the manufacturing process, the operational procedure, and or the documentation. So has the design been tested? Does it cover the design specification cover all the high reliability and safety requirements? These are usually avoided by any uh, failures are usually avoided, avoided by robust design and implementation tools and flows. And they're found with functional verification tools, simulators and like, and tool flow documentation. Systemic faults can happen both in software and in hardware. Now, what we'll cover today is more random hardware and failure faults. After you've perfected the design for safety, what can happen out when you implement the design in the field, whether it's in space or an industrial machine? Failures can occur at random time, which results in the degradation of the hardware. So random faults can come in, affect the hardware, they can be permanent or they can be transient. So you assess these with functional safety verification tools, which we'll describe in the next slides, and you monitor with implementation of safety mechanisms. Many variables are required to enable fault tolerance in FPGAs. Failure causes can happen for multiple variables. Temperature, we mentioned Venus earlier. Venus is a very hot environment. Operating outside the cold or hot ratings of an FPGA could cause many issues, including timing failures and actual breakdown of the FPGA. Process, testing is usually done to determine the process nodes. Uh, silicon manufacturing processes have a variance and all FPGA speed grades have a range of operation running outside these ranges could cause failures. Also the technology in the process. Some FPGA manufacturers are more robust in handling harsh environments 
at the expense usually of performance and area. Power. Power is outside the scope of an FPGA, but if you're running off a battery or a generator, uh, power rail failure could cause timing or bit flips in the FPGA if the power is not constant. Component failure, whether a particle or a rock can cause a failure to the component, an IO pin stuck at a wrong value um, could cause a catastrophic failure in an application. And then radiation. Radiation can be permanent or transient. These are usually particles that affect the FPJ performance or functionality and performance uh, and could cause a transient or permanent fault in the failure in the FPJ. And there are others too numerous to list. So error mitigation and correction protection. In an FPGA, what can we do to automate the creation of high re highly reliable designs? In some synopsis tools, it's easy to implement safety features in common design practices. For instance, almost every FPGA design has state machines. By default, the state machine is safe as long as the range of the state machine is, is bounded and the state machine does not go into an illegal state. However, with a, a bit flip or a catastrophic thermal event, the state bits could transition to an illegal state. What does the design do then? There are attribute-driven safety features safe, safe case, and having three corrections that can be implemented on a state machine to allow the state machine to automatically recover or at least detect a fault has occurred in the state machine. For having three, typically a single bit flip due to a particle, if having three is implemented, then the state machine will continue running normally. In other cases, if multiple bits are flipped, error flags can be used uh, to uh, detect unreachable states or uh, illegal transitions, and the design can be shut down or the state machine outputs can be ignored during that time. For safety critical data path applications, the common practice is to use TMR or triple modular redundancy in the design to implement three versions of the critical path followed by a voter. The voter will determine the correct output based on two correct out of three being correct. And the design will proceed, uh, will continue to run normally. For saving area, Duplicate with compare is often used, meaning that if a comparator is used, the design can detect if an error has occurred in one of the channels and something, either the data can be ignored or the FPJ can be reset. And then support IO can be a critical point in your design and IO replication will alleviate that issue. Memory is also a critical point in the design. Memory error correction, uh, TMR can be implied, modular, triple modular redundancy for RAMs, or many RAMs in today's FPGAs have ECC, error correction capability, which can detect a single error in the RAM data and automatically correct it. Error flags can also be used to determine if an error did occur, and a separate module can be used to accumulate these errors to determine whether this is a consistent pattern where the FPGA should be scrubbed or whether the design can proceed normally. And then debug error monitoring circuit insertion. Error flags I mentioned are created 
where you can monitor errors that are occurring in the design. Real-time debug circuitry can be implemented in the FPGA to monitor the, the errors and the design itself. And debug nodes for preservation and observation can be implemented in the FPGA. Synopsys offers a complete FPGA synthesis and verification solution with accelerated productivity for implementation and debug of highly reliable designs. Simplify high reliability for FPGA's implementation allows you to implement safe, finite state machines, multiple TMR techniques, support for ECC memories, and error matter monitoring flag insertion all via using simple attributes. The design can be implemented for normal use, and then via an attribute, safety mechanisms can be used to implement a highly reliable and safe design. For verification and debug, real-time debug integrated with synthesis, real-time fault injection for testing and monitoring whether the implementation of the reliability mechanisms is being done correctly. Then simulation environments with VCS simulation and or the Zoix fault simulator can be done offline uh, to verify faults and the safety mechanisms. Thank you very much for your time today. Please send us any questions.